This morning, I want to call your attention to the book of, of Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. And uh, this morning, I'm going to talk about the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. And I want to deal with soul winning. We're going to talk about soul winning. The preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. And we're going to talk about, in emphasis, uh, since this morning, soul winning. Other words, I want to explain to you, first of all, what is preaching? Preaching is the proclamation of good news. To proclaim, to speak, to, to, to hurl, to, to speak aloud, to share uh, the gospel, which is good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. When we talk about preaching, preaching also is to publish, not only to proclaim openly, but to publish and proclaim openly what God has done. In other words, when we talk about gospel or the gospel, we're talking about what God has done. We're talking about what? what God has done. And so when we preach, we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, these definitions are vitally important because most of you think preaching is going out telling sinners you're going to hell. <laughs> or going and tell sinners, some of you say go and tell sinners uh, you're sinning. Mm-hmm. And they already know that. To preach the gospel of the kingdom is to present good news or an alternative to the life I'm already living. To let me know without Christ there is no eternity in heaven. There's going to be an eternity in hell and hell may come up. But but the the object is that he came to save us. He can't save us from what? Save us from sin, save us from ourselves, save us from destruction. Are y'all following me? He came to deliver us. I mean, Jesus is very clear of his purpose. He know why he came. And that wasn't just to die. Dying was part of it. Jesus came to seek and to save those which are lost. And so by dying, that's the way he saved us. The last enemy to be destroyed was death. So that's what preaching is. Proclamation of good news to publish openly what God has done. So when we talk about what God has done for us, then, then we can also talk about uh, uh, to others what God's done for us. And it would convince others to now what? Want him to do the same for them. He saved me. He delivered me. Yeah. He healed me. He gave me peace of mind. He gave me hope. He gave me joy. So when you share those things, you can share what God has done for you. And when you share what God's done for you, he'll do that for others. Amen. Amen. The gospel should be preached, should be listened to, and the gospel should be obeyed. Let's go over to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. And I'm going to explore some other scriptures in, 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 in lieu of this one and, and inside of this. So I'm going to read verse 1 through verse 6. But I'm going to leave here momentarily to share some other points so you can understand what the preaching of the gospel is. And so in Luke 9, 1, it says, Then he called his twelve disciples together. He called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Mm -hmm. Y'all follow me? So first of all, he assigned them. He took the 12 disciples. He had more than 12, but these were apostles. And it said he gave them power and authority. I need you to understand that because you can have the power to do something, but not the authority to do it. That's right. You have a right to do it, but you're not authorized. Amen. Are y'all following me? I can be a jack leg uh, 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 auto mechanic, but I'm not authorized. That's right. That's right. Amen. I can fix your car behind my house, but it may not run. <laughs> Do y'all understand that? I have the power to fix your car. Uh, you know, you say I need somebody to pull the engine out, put a new one in. I can volunteer. I can tell you I got it. I can pull your engine, but the one I put in there may not get you anywhere. Amen. So I have the power. Somebody say have the power, power. but not authorized. authorized. See, other words, authority comes now from the manufacturer or from the one who's trained you. That's right. It comes from the originator. It comes from the builder. It comes from the maker. It comes from the creator. So in other words, if I go to mechanic school and learn how to work on particular engines, now I not only have the power to work on the engine, I am now authorized. That's right. Y'all ever see people say authorized dealer or authorized mechanic or authorized it? In other words, you can go out there. And see, our ushers, they direct traffic. That's why some of y'all park in the wrong place. This is a good example. <laughs> they have the power to tell you where to go. But because I authorize them from the church, but you don't see a badge and a gun. Make your plane. So therefore, they have the power to say, don't park here, to move over here, to go this way. But you look at them because you're looking for a badge and a uniform. You don't respect that red jacket. 
But see, the, the authority they've been given here, they, that red jacket says now they're usher, which is security. Somebody to direct you to, 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 to police. If you look up the word usher, they're, they're police. That's right. So they authorize in the church, but when you get outside these doors, you park where you want to park because you say they don't have the authority. <laughs> so Jesus wanted to make sure if we go out to preach, you're not going out to preach uh, just with the power to preach, but you're going to be an authorized preacher. Sure you're right. Do I have any authorized preachers in here today? In other words, I'm giving you the authority to share the gospel of the kingdom. And when you share the gospel of the kingdom, y'all going to see, there ought to be some signs following. How do we know that you're authorized? There ought to be some evidence. Somebody going to get saved. Somebody going to get delivered. Somebody going to get healed. Somebody going to come to Jesus because you're authorized. And so they went out. He gave them power and authority. Listen to me. Over some demons. Oh. Uh, let, me, let me emphasize this. I think some of you are too deep. And you're drowning. How many know demonic forces and spirits are behind all the things you're going through? Oh, yeah. That is not in God. That's right. There's only good and bad. It's only light and darkness. Anybody read Ephesians? That you don't rest against flesh and blood. Principalities, powers, rules. I know I'm talking about preaching the gospel. But I want you to know why Jesus had to authorize them and then say you have authority over all demons. Mm-hmm. Amen. Most things we're going through in our flesh, you know, the devil is behind it. How many of people say the devil made me do it? Yeah. Anybody read in Ephesians, don't give place? Yeah. Now listen to me, don't get alarmed. The elect of God and, and the born again of God, the devil doesn't have the right to, to, to feel you or to take over. That's right. That's right. But in all of us, he tampers with our minds. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. He can't live in me unless I give him permission. Y'all looking at me crazy. So don't worry about a demon that's taking over. He can't take over unless you let him move in. You got to give him a key in order for him to live in your house. If you're a believer. Now, now, if you're not a believer, you're walking in danger zone and you just out there, non-believer, unbeliever, and he's looking to fill the house of every vacancy, every vacant place, every person that doesn't have God in him. He wants to feel that. You read the scripture, you're not wrestling flesh and blood, but principality, powers, rulers of dark. Most of you think people are doing something to you or for you or whatever. It's either God working in them or the enemy working in them. See, some of you don't realize when it says cure all sickness and disease. That's why we look at cancer, we say that's a demon. We look at at the heart problem and say that's a demon. You look at diabetes and said, that's a demon. See, some of y'all looking at me crazy. And the reason your deliverance hadn't come, because some of you don't identify where it comes from. You think God put it on you in order. God can't put bad things on you and then so he can take it away. That would make him a double standard God. That means he's double minded. And God said all good and perfect gifts. It says in James, come from the Lord. Jesus said, I came to give you life. And I give life more abundantly. But the enemy comes to kill, steal, kill, steal, kill, steal, and destroy. So when we go out preaching glad tidings of good news, we got to say to people that have dilemmas in their life and issues in their life, I know you're going through that. Don't worry about the sickness. Don't worry about what you're going through right now. Right now, what you need is to receive the gospel. You need to receive the good news, what God has already done, what God is capable of doing, and what God is getting ready to do. Once you receive it, then you are now a candidate to release all of your sickness and diseases. I thought I drove to church. A lot of times we're speaking to the church people, but it's the church people that don't really believe. Some of you have been coming to church all your life, but you're really not an authorized Christian. You are a church goer, a church comer, you are affiliated, you pay God's homage, you're religious, you have good religion, you believe Sunday is a religious time, and so you've developed a religion and not a relationship, and because you don't have a relationship, it's difficult to preach. Yeah. 
Yeah. And some of you think preacher is only getting this platform and this place. Right now you have a teacher in front of you, an instructor in front of you, and I'm anointed to teach. And even in my preaching, there's teaching, and I'm teaching you how to do the work of the ministry. Yeah. Most of you think teaching and preaching is just from here and who's had the Sunday podium. No, I am perfecting you to go out of here and share the good news. Yeah. You're obligated to share the good news that Jesus is a healer. Yeah. Jesus is a savior. Yeah. Jesus came to deliver. Oh, how I love Jesus. Is there anybody here love him today? Now look at verse 1. We read verse 1, now verse 2 it says, And so Jesus called the 12, and, and so he had more than uh, 12 disciples. So y'all got to understand the scripture. He called 12 because he had many disciples, but these apostles he was authorizing for a reason. He called the 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases. And verse 2, everybody read it aloud. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Come on, read it one more time. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Can I get you to read it real loud one more time? And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, I want you to read it this way and take the P off of preach. Read it. Come on, read. He sent them to reach the kingdom of God and to now 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 read it again take the R off of reach and he sent them to to heal each the what kingdom of God so other words Jesus sent them to reach each person with the gospel of the kingdom and once each is reached they are now candidates to be healed How many authorized preachers do I have? Now, now to validate this, somebody say, Pastor, validate this. Because some of you think that that preaching, and and I know you've been taught that many are called, you heard this, and only few are chosen. So most people who preach or pastor or in some kind of leadership have used that scripture out of context. That's right. And they used it only to say many are called and few are chosen. And and then when we we, we think that, well, I'm called, you know, uh, and I'm chosen, but you're not. So I'm special to God, and you're not. How many know we all God's special people? Amen. How many know the gospel has no private interpretation? That's right. No private revelation. So all of us are responsible for sharing the gospel, and then there are certain signs and evidence that ought to follow. So, so many are called, few are chosen to use out of context. Ephesians chapter 4. I don't have that in my notes, but I want you all to go there real quick. I want to preach from the Holy Spirit this morning. Ephesians chapter 4. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one calling. Come on, Ephesians chapter 4. I want to go to that verse. Y'all tell me real quick when you got there. Right there, right there. Without me having to turn. What verse is that? Verse 4. Let's, let's start at verse 1. I'll read down so I can find myself. I, I have it in my heart. Not, I don't, I'm not looking at it. It's right here. I can tell you what it says. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hope, one calling. I'm trying to show you that the call is to the whole world. Amen. Whosoever will, somebody say, let him come. Let him come. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Ephesians 4, 4, 4, 1. It says, therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, I'm a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation. You walk what? Worthy of the vocation. You walk what? Worthy. Paul writing to the church in Ephesus saying that you walk worthy to the vocation. Now, when somebody talk about your vocation, what are they talking about? Your job. Somebody say, my job. My job. Ask your neighbor, what's your job? What's your job? So let's find out our job. He said, I beseech you as a prisoner. That means I've been arrested by, I'm sold out to, I'm now a servant of the Lord. He said that you walk worthy of your vocation, wherewith you are. Y'all need to underline that. You underline it in your mind or in your Bible if you got a, 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 a Bible to put it in your notes. Everybody should do their job. Tell your name, everybody do your job. Everybody do your job. Say no exceptions. No exceptions. Say I beseech you. I beg, I beg, plead of you, plead. Told, do, your do your job. Say, don't leave it all up to the preacher. Don't leave it all up to the, preacher. the preacher at the church. The, at the, church. the pastor. pastor. Say, you're the preacher. You're the preacher. Tell him, do your job. Do your job. Say, you've been, you've been called to do your job. Do your job. All right, verse 2. So walk in the vocation. Walk in your job where with your call. Verse 2. Verse 2, what does it say? With all lowliness and gentleness and long suffering and what? Bearing, Bearing with one another. Yeah. See, other words, you call to preach, but just because you call to preach, don't beat people up. Yeah. 
Right. Don't go around acting like you've been saved all your life and came out of your mother's womb. They slap you on your butt and you call, cry hallelujah. Don't, don't act <laughs> like there was a halo in your basket. Are y'all following me? Don't act like you was wrapped up in swallowing clothes like Jesus and was brought home from the hospital. Are you following? And there was a star over your crib. <laughs> so what he said, when you preach, there ought to be a sense of humility. There ought to be a sense of gentleness and kindness with people. Not dogmatic. Not argumentative. Come on, not boisterous and, and, and just braggadocious. Yeah. Not with the attitude, I'm better than you. I've been saved up 39 years. The Lord has saved me. Yeah. But see, before you got saved 39 years ago, you got to validate you were drunk. Right. Yeah. Are you fine? Or you had some of whatever you were or were not, you still had to be saved. I remember teaching evangelism, just a quick point, on a Saturday morning, about 20-something years ago, I was in the church, about 5,000 members, and my responsibility was evangelism, street witnessing, and, and winning people. So our class would come, and it was always a small class, and some of, but compared to the church size, we'd break up in different groups. And in my group, we was talking about how to share your testimony. How to do what? Yeah. And one young lady raised her hand and said, well, 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 well Brother Anderson and Ms. Anderson, I, I don't have a testimony. I said, well, why don't you have to? She said, I'm not like the rest of y'all. I said, what do you mean? She said, I was raised fairly good. She said, I never drink. I never smoke. I don't curse. I didn't go out to parties. I obeyed my parents. I did a lot of good things well. I went off to college. She said, and and I got saved later in my adult life. and, And I'm living for God. And I love God. So I don't have a testimony. She said, I'm not like y'all. She said, everybody over here saying they used to party and they were on drugs or they, they, they was uh, sexually promiscuous and God delivered. She said, no, I, I, I keep myself and I've been doing this even when I was a sinner and I don't have a testimony. <laughs> and so I wait till she got through and I was amazed. I said, oh, that's awesome. I said, that's, that's that. oh man. I said, uh, and I started getting excited. She said, I said, whoa, you got a testimony. I said, you got a test? And she said, what? I don't have a testimony. See, I was teaching them how to be humble and share the good news and that God said. But she thought the good news was all about how much bad stuff she had done and then God delivered. See, that's why most of y'all are thinking. That's why you don't think you need the Lord because you've been fairly good all your life. But your goodness can't get you there. Some of y'all have not read Romans chapter 10. Paul said, my prayer and desire for Israel is that they might be saved. He said, I bear record. They have a zeal of God. They have excitement, but not according to knowledge. That's right. They being ignorant of God's righteousness has gone about to establish their own righteousness. Amen. See, to be righteous with God means you're in right standing with God. And you can't be in right standing with God until you receive Jesus. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. Amen. 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 I said to her, young lady, somebody will mess you up, but I'm about to correct you. You have a testimony. It ain't about how good you've been. That's right. I said, you have a, such a great testimony because in all your good living and all the doing right and all the obeying your parents, you still needed Jesus. So you have a testimony to let people know this is good news. I didn't do none of the stuff you're doing. And I still needed to be saved. Amen. Amen. He's not saving you from stuff. He's saving you from yourself because mankind is sinners and all have sinned. And all has fallen. So it ain't because you smoke what kind of cigarette and, and what kind of joint. It doesn't matter what you rolled up in your paper. You don't have a word rolled up in your heart. You still lost. You can never roll a joint and never drink a liquor and never be promiscuous sexually and still go to hell. Let me go on this side. All y'all been saved over there. Let me, let me talk to these people. I ain't going to mess with y'all. All y'all been right all your life. <laughs> Did y'all know that it ain't what you drink, smoke it? Amen. Jesus came to seek and save those which are lost. Who is lost? Mankind been lost since the Garden of Eden. We could not get born again until God came in the flesh and he had to conquer the last enemy. And the last enemy is death. 
Let me tell y'all something. Y'all don't know nothing about that last enemy, but you better understand this about that last enemy. We all going to experience it. But after death, there's judgment. I know I'm throwing a lot of scripture out there, but you better write these down. You better catch me if you fast. But Hebrew 9.27... It's been appointed to every man a time to die. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all are like, oh my God, we're going to die. we all going to die. Amen. I'm going to die, you're going to die. But you better not be concerned about the first part of that statement. Yeah. Hebrew 9.27, it appointed every man a time to die, but after that, yes, judgment. Right. You ain't worried about dying, you better worry about judgment. Right. Because you're going to spend eternity, that's the good, you're going to spend eternity somewhere. And if you don't know Jesus, I don't care how good you are, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're lost. That's right. You're dead in sin. I'm going to give y'all, y'all write down 1 John 5, 11, 12. I got to go there after I finish Ephesians. So many scriptures rolling out of me, I got to make sure you get them. Forget the notes, the Holy Ghost knows what he's doing. And, and so I'm talking about that call to preach. That call, that job. Somebody say that job. Yes, so when we do our job, we have to walk in humility. You got to be kind to people. Did y'all leave me already? Oh, they went up to Hebrew 9.27. See, they, they working fast. <laughs> You've been appointed for every, every man wants to die. But after this, what's after death? Yes. What's after death? Yes. And so what I'm dealing with today, the good news is you can stand before the judgment seat and be in right standing if you accept Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The bad news is you're going to die, and if you die without Christ, you're going to hell with Satan. That's right. Amen. And those of you who've been in other churches and other denomination religion, they fooled you because they wanted your money, and they told you there's purgatory in the waiting room. I'm letting you know there ain't no waiting room. And you can't pay enough money in church to keep your soul out of hell if you don't know the Lord. I don't care what your profession is, what your job is in this world, secularly, what you do, how much money you make, you still need Christ. Tell your neighbor that. Say, you still need Christ. Say, don't you sit up here with the big head. Saved or unsaved. Say, it's what the Lord has done. Not what you've done. All right, y'all go back to Ephesians. Thank you for your help. Go back to Ephesians. Y'all quick up there today. Y'all, y'all on the money. I'm going to be rolling, so y'all stay with me. Holy Ghost. Ah, oh, glory. Look at y'all up there. Hallelujah. So it says, prisoners of the Lord, I beseech you to walk in your what? Worthy of your what? Of your what? The calling is your what? Your vocation. He said, where would you was called? All right, now, now verse 2. Come on, verse 2. He said, with all lowliness, gentleness, and what? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Right? Humble, kind, and then you got to be, listen to me, long-suffering means you got to be able to bear people. Stop acting like you accepted Jesus on the first invitation. I know Uncle Bubba getting on your last nerve. I know Aunt Snuff, she's aggravating. Y'all, y'all follow me. But you got to know how to be patient with Aunt Snuff and, and, and Uncle Bubba. And just because they're still dipping and smoking and cussing and drink, But see, you'll know something. If you live right around them, they'll respect you when you come around. Yeah, you're right. No matter. But don't get so agitated right. that you don't want to share the good news and already condemn them to hell. Yeah. Some of y'all are condemning people to hell that God have an assignment for. Yeah. And, and the crack addict or the drug or the promiscuous person that you've written off, God has an assignment for them. That may be somebody's prodigal son or daughter that's out there in the hog pit and all God needs is a willing vessel to do their job and go find that son and say son you need to know the Lord the reason some of those people in the hog pit never come to their right mind because some of us in the church got too big of opinion of ourselves and we won't go and share or you going to hell who are you to put somebody in hell amen amen did you read Peter? I don't have time to go there. But it's not God's will that any man perish, but all come to repentance. Did you read that? It's not his desire to destroy. Did you read John 3, 16? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believe shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, I agree. Don't cast your pearl before swine. Don't give that which is holy to dogs. But be able to be long-suffering. Amen. You know, it's, it's about like pastoring. If all of y'all have arrived 
and was doing right, I don't need to be here this morning. Let me, let me, let me, let me go deeper than that. It ain't really deep. If all y'all tithe, I didn't have to ever talk about it. I thought I'd get somebody's attention. Some of y'all still praying about whether you should pay your tithe or not. That's why as a pastor, I'm perfecting you. Some of you love God, say you say, but you don't even know tithing is almost a problem. I ain't giving the Lord 10% of my money. It ain't even yours. You lost your mind. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Amen. That's right. So that's why we have church. The pastor is here now, apostles, pastor, prophets, teachers, evangelists. They're here to perfect you. Those are gifts God gave to you. He said, I won't leave you alone. I won't leave you like an orphan. I won't leave you untaught. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to deposit myself in each one of y'all that accept me. I'm going to live in you. The Holy Ghost is going to be your teacher and your guide. And then I'm going to anoint some who's going to teach you. That's right. That's right. But when they teach you, don't walk around with the big head. I haven't arrived. You haven't arrived. Amen. Amen. So that's why as a pastor, y'all be like, Brother, you need to put songs on the church. They ain't living right. You need to leave with them if they're going to leave. <laughs> Which one of us going to leave first? Because none of us are perfect. I know that busts some bubbles. Amen. What we are is saved and we ought to lift our hands and give them praise. Come on. We're born again. We're on the right track. Go ahead and tell God thank you. You've acknowledged Jesus and you're in your right mind. Tell him thank you. That's the start. So when you're preaching the gospel, you got to be humble about it. Can't be arrogant. Condescending. Braggdocious. Long-suffering. Bearing with. But sometimes we can't stand the guy because he got alcohol on his breath. Like you ain't never drank. Amen. And some of y'all, didn't look at these cute Christians. Oh, I only drink at dinner. <laughs> you hypocrite. And then you're going to sit here because this man got the alcohol on his breath. Tell me, at dinner, does the, 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 the smell of alcohol still stay on your breath? Uh, is there a difference? <laughs> 